Oh, I'm in your video again. I, I watched your video this morning. Oh, yeah? <laughs> my skin hat now. <laughs> Alright, I'm Alex. This is Sen and this is Suppy. Back in 2017, I built my own tiny home on wheels. Since then, I've been living my dream of an action-packed nomadic lifestyle. Thanks to the brilliance of laptops, internet and remote income streams, I've had the freedom to travel, adventure and enjoy what our amazing planet has to offer. It's great to have you along for the journey. Enjoy the video. So I'm here in Morocco where it's notoriously hard to get alcohol anyway, but at the moment with the lockdown and everything else, it has become really difficult to get alcohol. So what's the solution? Make my own booze. Now this is actually a lot easier than I ever thought it would be. It's three simple ingredients, a tiny wee bit of technical stuff and some time. Now this is not the same as making moonshine, so it's not got the dangers of explosions and going blind from methanol. However, there are considerations to make and they are pretty much just legalities of it. Some countries it's not legal to make your own alcohol, so please, if you're going to do this, make sure you check the legality in your own country. Simple ingredients. Juice, yeast and sugar. The measurements are pretty simple for this, but you've got to remember that it's per litre of final volume, not the volume of liquid that you actually put into the mixture. Be sure to check how much sugar is in your juice and take that away from the total so you know how much to add. As for the liquid, I'm actually experimenting a bit and one is going to be pretty much 100% juice and the other will be half juice, half water. The first thing I'm going to do is dissolve the sugar into some hot water. I know this seems like a crazy amount of sugar, but the yeast will be in most of this. You won't be drinking it yourself. You can see here that the sugar's not properly dissolved yet. Ah, there you go, crystal clear. Now while the sugar solution is cooling off, I made the airlock contraptions. Now there's many different ways to do this and I've not given any requirements of stuff to use because generally you just find stuff around the house. One pellet was stuck in the bottom and after trying to get it out for some time I realised that the best option was to set it on fire. This is some precise measuring going on. Here you can see that I didn't have a big enough drill bit so I had to get a bit bodgy. This is to let the air out the top of the airlock. One hole's probably enough, but you know, drilling's fun. The second airlock is very similar to the first one, but I found a piece of pipe that I bent over and stuck to the side. I'm not going to show you the full process because it's just the same as the last one. I used an off cut from the metal straw to make a support from the lid to the pipe. So it's 20 grams of yeast just going into a little bit of water there. As you can see it can take quite a bit of mixing because it's like lumps to the spoon. This doesn't want to be left there standing more than 15 minutes so just take that into account that you need to wait for the sugar solution to cool down. Below 40 degrees C, the sugar solution needs to be. Otherwise, the yeast, the yeast, you will die. And then what you want to be looking for with this is that bubbles are starting to pour like a foam across the top. 
If nothing's really happening, you can put a teaspoon of sugar in and leave it a few more minutes and then you should see something happening. Okay, so this is five litres. We're gonna put four litres of juice in for this. Peach and orange. Oh, this isn't the best juice. It's uh, it actually says minimum 40% fruit on the side. Although it shouldn't make a difference to the alcohol content, just the taste. Oh well, yeah, the, the yeast is really foaming up now, so that's definitely activated. Sugar solution, yeast food. So I've left this half full to give it a shake. Which the reason for that is to push oxygen into the into the mixture. Because for the first couple of days the yeast actually needs oxygen rather than being starved of it and it helps them colonise. And then after like day uh, two, then there should be no oxygen in there, otherwise you're gonna get vinegar. Which is the whole point in the airlock. Okay, so then I use a little bit of juice to wash the rest of the yeast out of the cup as well. a good mixer, pop the uh, airlock on and then fill the water just halfway across like this. It's annoying that with this pipe you can't actually see the water in it unless you shine a light right in the back so a clear pipe is better. Sometimes when you move it and if you squeeze the bottle it pushes a bit of air out and then sucks the water back in off the top thing. So put it in position before you put the water in. Thirty minutes later, and you can see we've got gases being produced. And that's it. Now I just need to wait for three days to three weeks. I'm not sure. Um, Kyle, who you saw at the beginning of the video and on other videos, possibly. He's been making it for three days um, and we've been drinking it and it's been getting us drunk and it tastes all right. So, But then I do some research online that says wait till it stops fermenting, so when it stops bubbling and that can take up to three weeks. We'll experiment and see. When it is ready, I'm going to drink it and let you guys know, probably live, we could do a live, we could do a live drinking test and see how strong it is. Please give the video a like, subscribe. In fact, if you've just come to this video to watch it for the whole alcohol making thing, it's not the normal sort of video I do, so it's probably not worth you subscribing. But if you like travel, vans and stuff, dogs, subscribe. See you on the next one. So you can see with this, I've actually added an extra little bit here, which is the a bit of leftover pipe, just to keep this pipe here more upright. You can hear it bubbling away there. Oh shit! Yeah, I thought that might happen. Oh, that's going to be really sticky. Oh no, that's going to be so sticky. Oh, the floor is ever so sticky. Oh no. Oh no.